Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of my skill system series. We are going to continue working on our enemy AI and add some features so that it detects the player, follows him and starts attacking him. To get started let's go into our AI folder, enemies and open up the master enemy class. Here we'll head over to the viewport and add an AI perception component. Then select that and we'll modify some values. So. Let's add a sense config here for AI side. Then you can expand it here, expand the sense, and we can tweak some values here. So side radius I'll set to something like 800, loose side radius maybe 2000, angle of 90 should be fine for now. Then expand the detection by affiliation and we'll just check everything in here since we're not using those enemy neutral and friendly tags and if you don't do that you should select all of them otherwise it can happen that some actors are not perceived. The rest here should be fine. Also let's go to the dominant sense and just select AI sense side. Then add an event for on perception updated and we are not going to implement that yet but just have it created. Instead let's add some variables here. First one will be a target actor, so the actor that our spider is following. That will just be an actor reference. Then we've got the attack animations. This here will be an anim montages reference array. Let's also compile and save this. Then we will add three elements and scroll down mon underscore attack one for the first one and also select the other ones so two and three then the current animation index so which index from our attack animations array are we playing currently this will be a single variable and an integer also let's add a current attack montage type here will be an anim montage reference and let's add a variable called attack range which will be a float addable expose and spawn and set the attack range to 50 maybe for a spider that should work fine also let's expose the attack animations as well as the patrol walk speed and patrol radius then afterwards add a function called get next animation index. It will be a pure function, so check this and add one output, type integer called index. What we're going to do here is we will get our attack animations, get our current animation index, and add one to this. So integer plus integer and then we want to check whether that is greater than the last index of our attack animations array. So we will compare those. Then go into a select node, select int. If that is true, means we just handled the last index so we don't need to start all over again. So for A just use 0 and for B connect the current animation index plus 1. Then connect the return value to the out index, compile and save. We need another pure function that we'll call in attack range. Question mark. As I said, it will be a pure function. Again, one output, this time boolean called out. And what we are going to do here is we need to get the distance from ourselves to the target actor. Drag in the target actor, get it then get a reference to self and search for get distance to connect self to the other actor and we want to check whether that is less than or equal to our attack range and connect that to the return value and that's it let's go back to the event graph and add a custom event which we will call perform attack. Before we do anything in here, let's add a branch. 
the condition will be our is that boolean and we only want to do something if that is false so if we are still alive first thing we need to turn our enemy to the player so set actor rotation of self and for the new rotation we will get a reference to self get location actor location and then find look at rotation you can already plug that in for the new rotation then for the target get the target actor and get its actor location afterwards let's set our current attack montage we will drag in our attack animations and get from that array at our current animation index then plug that in for the set current attack montage then we can drag off of this and search for play and a montage and let's also get the sequence length and we will add a delay so we wait until we finish playing our attack animation after this there is no current attack montage so we can set that to null and set the current animation index to the next one so we can call our get next animation index function plug that in here afterwards at branch we want to check if we are still in attack range if so we can just perform the next attack so perform attack if not we need to approach the player so ai move to pawn will be self and the target actor will be our target actor variable and for the acceptance radius we can just plug in our attack range then hook that up and on success we can perform the next attack all right that's it for the perform attack custom event now we need some more variables first one a boolean called was aggro question mark and another boolean called is running back so when our enemy is too far away from his original location it will reset so reset the health and then run back to the starting location just like most enemies do in RPGs and MMORPGs. Now let's add another event called on aggro pulled with one input of the type actor reference which is going to be just the target. Again let's start with a branch because we want to check whether was aggroed is false so search for not and is running back should also be false then connect that to the end the end to the condition if that is true we can set is patrolling to false then set was aggroed to true also we need to set the target actor to our input get our character movement component set max walk speed and let's promote that to a variable called aggroed walk speed we can expose this and set the default maybe to 600 that's also a common feature for RPGs that enemies are very slow when they are patrolling and once they actually see you they speed up after this let's set timer by function name and I'll just type in the function already though we didn't create it yet and it will be follow target distance and make sure to spell that correctly so basically a check whether our enemy is too far away from its original location object will be self looping is set to true and time maybe an interval of one second then promote that to a variable which we can call follow distance timer and then let's add a branch 
check if we are in attack range. If so, we can just perform an attack. If not, we will need to call AI move to. Pawn will be self. Target actor will be our target actor. And acceptance radius R attack range. And then on success, like we did before, we can perform an attack. All right, let's add another custom event, which we'll call on reset. So when we got too far away from our starting location, then we will set is running back to true. Set the current animation index back to zero. Just resetting that. Get our follow distance timer and clear and invalidate timer by handle. So that is not ticking anymore. Set the target actor to null. And also set was aggroed back to false. After that, we will call AI move to on will be a reference to self. And this time we will get our starting location. Plug that in for the destination. And on success, let's get our character movement. Set max walk speed back to our patrol walk speed. Then set is patrolling to true. Call the patrol function. So we start moving to the next point. And finally set is running back to false. Now we still need to create the function for our timer here. So let's do that. Follow target distance it is called. And what this will simply do is get the starting location and get actor location of self, so current location. And we will subtract the actor location that we are at now from our starting location. Then get the length, vector length. Let's check whether that is greater than a certain value that we can promote to a variable called follow player radius. Make that editable and expose on spawn. Compile, maybe set that to 2000. Then add a branch. If that's true, we need to call on reset before we can return. And if it's false, just return instantly, compile and save. Then the only thing left to do is our on perception updated event. And here we will add another branch. We need to check that we weren't aggroed already. So that should be false, add a not boolean. And let's promote the second condition here to a variable that we will call aggressive, question mark. Make that editable, expose and spawn, compile, and by default we will set that to true. So that just means that later you can have different types of enemies, some that will instantly attack you when they see the player, or maybe some other ones that you need to attack first or that just run away. Connect that and statement to the condition of the branch. And if it's true, we will get our updated actors and run it for each loop with break. For every array element, we will cast it to the skill character. And if that cast succeeds, we will just call on aggro pulled target being the skill character here before breaking out of a loop. All right, let's compile this, save, and let's test it. So if we play, our enemy is walking around, patrolling. If I now approach it and it sees me, it starts hunting me, launches its first attack, and it will do its combo. So second attack, then the attack with both claws. And if I pull it too far away, so if it first keeps following me, and then it will turn around and move back to its original location. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.